everyone, it is Alfred Wars, so welcome back to another episode of Boom Beach. Today, you guys are joining me for another episode of the Boom Beach base reviews. This is an episode in which we're going to be taking a look at the base of other Boom Beach players out there. In the last episode, I gave you guys the ability to win a Boom Beach base review. Today is the same thing as well. What you need to do if you want to be a featured in one of these episodes, go to the comment section of this video, comment down below the template I got set up for you guys, and you have a chance of winning a Boom Beach base review. The very first one is gonna be of Piotr, uh, which is right now uh, currently headquarters level 16. Uh, this is a task force. If you guys want to be knowing about this, he's currently the highest one out there, uh, level 44 with 329 victory points. So he uh, he's headquarters level 16, so that means he's already like progressing pretty far into the game. Let's go over the support buildings and then go over all you need to know about defense. So first off, we have a radar here level 15. It's actually pretty cool. A vault level 14. Uh, my main advice is to try to keep it one level behind the headquarters. You simply just don't lose a lot of resources if you have your vault uh, and leveled up just like your headquarters. Then over here, you got yourself a armory level 14. I see a weapon lab. That means that hopefully you do have a prototype module, which you do. You got a damage amplifier plus uh, number one, I mean. So we're going to take a look at that one a little bit later. And you got a sculptor level 5. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at your statues. So one thing that I noticed is you have four eye statues. Uh, life statues, sorry four life statues and honestly i would feel considering the fact that you don't have a resource reward statue to definitely get yourself one of those and maybe even a guardian to top it off uh, another statue i'm missing is you have troop health but you don't have troop damage that's something you can do and maybe for your fourth statue you can go for something like a power stone chance or something like that or maybe even keep your gold production one because that one is good regardless but i honestly wouldn't recommend in this stage of the game to have like uh, a lot of, of of life statues unless of course you're not really attacking then if you online if you log on like once a day or something like that and do barely anything in boomish then this is a great setup to go with but other than that i honestly feel that you should actually invest your time and effort into like dark statues so that is just my tip to you what else do you got you got a 32 percent gunboat and a 34 percent building damage uh, that 34 percent is actually not that bad i think the max is like 37 so you're pretty you're pretty close to that Okay, let's take a look at your landing craft, so your gunboat, gunboat level 15 is actually okay, 12, uh, 14, um, so for heavy Zuka you can upgrade them to I think level 14 all of them to get yourself an additional uh, Zuka. I'm not really sure, I think level 16 or 17 gives you an additional heavy or something like that. Or is it? No, I think it might be level 14 as a matter of fact, or 15. Uh, anyway, I'm going, on, going all over the place right now. My main concern with your base is the main light, um, the mine layout. I mean, people obviously, or units obviously are going to be hitting those mines. But fact of the matter is, if I zoom in all the way, then chances are this is the only set of mines that you're actually going to be encountering during a battle. Uh, same thing over here. I mean, the mines that I'm seeing is basically the amount of mines you your units are maybe going to be walking at. Because obviously the units are going to be spreading out a little bit. But it's not going to be all that far. My main tip to you is going to be for your regular mines. Make sure you place them a little bit more into the base itself. So place a couple of next to these cannons on the outside. Uh, place a couple of them next to the rocket launcher or next to the boom cannon. Maybe behind the sniper tower. Maybe at the damage amplifier. Uh, surround your headquarters with a couple of them because at 329 medals you don't really see a lot of warrior attacks but they are there and you definitely want to be protecting your headquarters against something like that and uh, just do something with your mines i'm fairly certain you'll be able to do something better fairly easily with the mines than what you currently have so yeah actually like going to my next point i see a damage amplifier so what you have been doing with the damage amplifier is actually a big plus Placing in rocket launchers within your damage amplifier is potentially the best thing you can do. I'm also a big fan of placing like a boom cannon on there as well. So maybe you want to be swapping that up with your sniper tower. But this isn't all that bad. I mean, it kind of like drags away the attention from the boom cannons itself. And that right now they have some great, great central uh, range. So with that being diverted away from the boom cannon, they can fully operate to their full potential. So that's actually a great move. And with this uh, flamethrower thing, I would definitely keep it the way it is right now. 
The only thing that I'm kind of missing is like a couple of flamethrowers around the headquarters because that simply is more efficient. What you may want to be considering of doing is swapping the cannons in the back with some of the machine guns or flamethrowers in the front there so that way your front is even better protected the way it is right now. Other than that, I like the way you place these sniper towers, they're nicely backed up by these two boom cannons and of course the, the rocket launches as well. So that's an overall good. I, I kind of like what you have ongoing here. With all of these buildings in the back, it means that you don't give away a lot of resources. But in general, it's a pretty nice base. I just kind of feel if you tweak the mines and if you make your frontal offense a little bit stronger or defense, then I'm pretty sure you'll be able to come a long way. So that is the very first base. Let's move on to the second base. So the second base we're going to be taking a look at comes from a user named uh, Godspeed. Boom Beach and his in-game name is Godspeed. He's level 46. Uh, he's actually the leader of the guild Siege. Maybe you guys want to be joining in. They only have 14 members. I'm pretty sure they could use a couple of the more. The uh, victory point entry is only 200. So you might be finding your place with friends there. Anyway, uh, right now 425 medals. Let's go ahead and see what this base is going to be all about. So... Headquarters level 17, you already got your shock launch, your place I see, that is actually a great thing, keep that up, um, but we'll talk a little bit more about the shock launcher later, because I kind of feel the way it is positioned right now might make it go to waste, because I potentially already see a better spot where you can place this one. Before we get into all of that, I kind of want to take a look at the usual, so let's go ahead over at the left side, where there's a raider level 16, that's actually pretty nicely leveled, you have an armory level 15, that means that your units are kind of up to par to where they're at right now with the headquarters. I see a sculptor level 6, very nice. I see a vault level 16 as well. Then over here you got yourself a gunboat level 17, that great job there. 16 of all of these landing crafts. Uh, so yeah, for your landing crafts you're doing really great. And then what else do we see? We see a weapon lab. Weapon Lab Level 1 featuring a Doom Cannon Level 1 as well. That Doom Cannon is in a very incredible position. I mean, it basically covers the entire front area, which is definitely a plus. Now, what I usually would do with, with a setup like this is I would place like a couple of sniper towers to kind of protect it or to back it up. I mean, if people are going to be attacking a base, they usually tend to go for what attacks them first. So in this position, uh, you have a machine gun over here, which is all okay and everything like that. But in the front of the defense, it's not really going to be meaningful all that much because you're going to be facing against heavies, uh, heavies and zookas, tanks and medics. And that's where the machine guns unfortunately don't really shine. You maybe want to have some boom cannons or something like that or just regular cannons to back those up. So that's definitely a tip from my side. Also, the mine placement. Just like the last base, what you want to be doing is get those mines inside of the base. And I already see a couple of really great locations where you can place these boom mines behind sniper towers uh, right around here. And maybe behind this uh, boom cannon over here. And overall, that's something that I would be doing. Now, as far as your shock launcher goes... What I would potentially do for in your position is place it where this mortar is because uh, the shock launcher is going to be doing a ton of work or maybe even where this boom cannon is because the range of a shock launcher is, is crazy and in the position of the boom cannon you already see how very much centralized this one is it can only do better in a location like that i kind of know where you're going for in the back but in a base like this in the layout the way it's set up i kind of i kind of see it go better if it's on the location of the boom cannon now you probably might be uh, wondering to yourself where do i place this boom cannon then how about you place both boom cannons a little bit more in the front maybe where these two cannons are or something like that i feel they're gonna be like a bigger deal that way and have one close to the headquarters to kind of back up everything and, and do a lot of damage against units that are getting close to the headquarters uh, those are mine tips to you and also just you know the mines are kind of bothering me the mines honestly are kind of bothering me i really kind of feel you can do a lot more with those but i definitely like this base don't get me wrong this base is really great because you're barely giving away anything if you're giving away anything then it would be this golden storage or maybe these two are pretty easy to get yourself um, to get those. But other than that, it's a great base. Uh, I like what you've done there, Godspeed. I, I definitely can tell you've put a lot of hard work, thought and effort into this base. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Um, 
Just a little side note, maybe your rocket launchers can be placed a little bit differently as well. You maybe want to be placing this one a little bit more into the front. Uh, this location, as a matter of fact, is also already pretty brilliant. And this rocket launcher over here, I got no complaints about it because the range is absolutely powerful. Let's move on to the final base of this episode. So this final base of today's episode comes from a self-proclaimed very massive fan. And he would love for me to review his base. Well, you're in luck, Dan Phillips, because today we're going to be taking a look at your base as well. His name in-game is Dan with double N. And as you guys can see, level 48 with 535 medals. We're going up in the medal count. Let's actually see what he has to offer. From my understanding, his headquarters is level 20. So that means you're on par with me. I'll be able to probably give you a solid base review for your base so let's actually see what we got on hand right now um you're pretty uh, you're pretty early that has was level 20 so that means you maybe have a couple of things here and there that you might want to be leveling on and maybe you got some questions about what you should be leveling up first i'm going to be talking about this in this very base review so that being said let's go to the left side i see a weapon lab level 2 that means you have the ability to place a prototype defense uh, armory level 17 that's actually pretty nice not too bad uh, radar level 18 you're not at the ending of the map yet not at the ending of the archipelago i don't even know how to pronounce that at the ending of the map yet you still have hammerman level i think maybe 55 and 60 to explore so that's going to be uh, pretty exciting on your part where is your vault i don't see it do you have it built i'm pretty sure that you do i'm pretty sure i'm just blind in this where is it i i don't see it do you even have a vault then do you have a vault maybe hidden somewhere around the air i i mean i see a critter going here iron storage so there must be something here too where is your where is your vault buddy where is your vault i'm gonna be looking for this vault until i find it because iron storage golden storage wooden storage there must be a vault here somewhere where ah oh, there you go level 16 vault level that one up because uh obviously you want to max this one out relatively early on it is not really that expensive and it helps you get a lot of resources because headquarters 20 comes with everything maxed out you're going to be needing a lot of resources to get those done so definitely set it in your priority list to level up the vault as quickly as you can uh, but maybe not the most quickly thing out there. Let's take a look at your sculptor. Your sculptor is an even bigger priority than your vault is. Because an additional statue can, you know, make the difference between losing and winning in Boom Beach. Speaking of statues, let's go ahead and take a look at what you got from left to right. You have a 12% gunboat energy. Uh, 24, 31, not too bad. 50, 17, 30. Then over here, 21, you got a 46 over here and a 32. That defensive building damage is not that bad. It's actually pretty decent. So you got some decent statues on going. Good for you. Uh, Gunboat 19. Obviously, you want to max that one out as well. Landing crafts. Now, I don't really know what you're using, but my standing point is... Before you move on to really big things, get your landing crafts up to level 17. It will allow you to carry 7 warriors per landing craft so that already really helps you out you did a great job upgrading the final landing craft all the way up to at least level 15 so you did a great job there that kind of shows you have been on headquarters level 20 for a little while already and that being said let's actually go ahead and take a look at your defenses what i'm seeing is a shock blast level one in a very very nice position that's actually the best possible position you can have it in an alternative would be in the front of the headquarters making it very deadly and threatening um you maybe even want to be exchanging this one with this flamethrower over here because while well, the flamethrower is simply stronger at the headquarters and with a base like this warriors is guaranteed to be attacking your base uh they don't really have to use a whole lot um from a quick glance at your base i would just drop a barrage around this mine getting d6 mines including this one over here and then over here you see one two three four five six seven seven mines over here maybe drop a barrage there uh, considering that your mines aren't really maxed out yet um 
I see warriors taking down taking this base down fairly easily all they need to do is drop a shock here and they will already get themselves a flamethrower over here same thing at the exact opposite opposite side and they can just smack smack the smack sack take out the base so this base in my honest opinion doesn't stand a chance against the warriors in the current state so you may have to adjust it accordingly if you think that is annoying there's always bases out there which are designed to you know be anti-warrior but other than that let's actually go over your defenses you see a hat boom cannons level 6 level 10 that is not even all the bad uh, i honestly would place this boom cannon in the front of your headquarters now because it's the only boom cannon that is all that high level you kind of want to pressure the front there what I like about this base is the way you got your sniper towers and your regular cannons set up. And then over here you've got a quarry, kind of uh, a nice building to have down there. Same thing with the sawmill because that means that units cannot really work their way around it. I mean they have to really face it and this is the best possible build. Best, best possible building to have as a wall against your base so I really like what you have done there then a rocket launcher to back it up over here and a rocket launcher to back it up over there it's a very solid and compact base it's just that I feel bases like these are relatively easy to uh, to figure out as far as strategy goes because if you drop a shock uh, you're gonna be getting like a lot of very very much key buildings like if you drop a shock here uh, in, the, in the center you will be able to get this boom cannon this shock launcher and this rocket launcher if you do it properly and those are pretty pretty important buildings uh, even though I, uh, if i say so myself so maybe you want to be covering some distance with those what is a really huge pro at this base is that you're literally giving nothing away I mean, everything is very nicely protected. Maybe if people got out of their way to take those buildings, they would be getting wiped out. But the center is really around your headquarters and a lot of defenses are there. That's not actually a really bad base. You can definitely go ahead and, and uh, do stuff with this base. My personal opinion about what you should be upgrading, what is very important to upgrade with a base like this, are gonna be cannons, your boom cannons, and your rocket launchers, as always. But then flamethrower is, is a very key building to upgrade as well. Hopefully this, this base is gonna be doing well. I'm really curious to know how your base defense is. So Dan, if you could leave a comment telling me how many of the, the bases you're going to be winning. I, I'm pretty sure you're going to be... Uh, I'm pretty curious about this right now. Maybe what you can do is place a couple of more like flamethrowers or something like that. Or uh, some machine guns around the headquarters. Maybe where the mortars are or something like that. But you know, I think, um, I think it's going to be pretty solid. I think this base might win a couple of bases but otherwise lose everything so with that being said we're going to be wrapping this boondies base review off here as always make sure to leave your comments in the comment section down below once again there's a template down there if you want to be having your base featured fill in the template entirely and then uh maybe you're going to be on the next episode so that being said as always make sure that if you guys like this video to boom give it a thumbs up and this has been reverse for boom beach i'm going to be signing off and i'll see you guys in the next one